In this video, we will talk about the regulation of cell cycle. In the last video, I have discussed about the uh, one type of cell division that is mitosis and this mitosis is responsible for the repairment, growth, replacement whereas meiosis which is another kind of cell division is responsible for the uh, like reproductive cells like formation of the gametes. Now, this mitosis is also known as equational division because the chromosome number is maintained in the daughter cell. Whereas meiosis is called reductional division because haploid number is uh, passed into the daughter cells. Now, in mitosis we saw two phases that is interphase and mitotic phase. This interphase has G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase. G1 phase is the first growth phase or GAP1 phase. In few books you will see written first growth, growth phase but GAP1 is widely known because it is the gap between the mitotic cell cycle, uh, mitotic division or mitotic phase and the synthetic phase. And in G1 the cell size uh, is like it increases and uh, like the proteins or uh, the enzyme RNA synthesis takes place for the replication of DNA which occurs in the S phase. In the S phase DNA replication occurs and centrioles are also duplicated. In the second growth phase or gap 2 phase we see the, uh, the certain enzymes or proteins which are necessary for the cell divisions. They are uh, synthesized in GAP2 phase and it also checks in this phase that the chromosome number is uh, maintained or not, uh, whether there is any damage in the DNA or not. So this is what uh, in the GAP2 phase occurs and then it enters into the mitotic phase and this mitotic phase has a prophase where the nuclear membrane disappears and the chromatin fibers condense to form chromosomes, uh, centrioles start moving to the opposite poles. Then uh, the metaphase where the chromosomes they align themselves in the equatorial plane. Then we have the uh, anaphase where, where the spindle fiber on contraction separates the two sister chromatids. And finally we have the telophase uh, where the two sister chromatids have been formed and two daughter cells are formed and the nuclear membrane appears, the nucleoli also appears, spindle fibers disappear and a furrow is formed where at the end of mitosis cytokinesis takes place where the cytoplasm is divided. Okay, so you see two equal daughter cells are formed of the same size as that of the mother and the chromosome number is maintained. So now we will see that suppose this is the G1 phase, this is S phase, this is G2 phase and this overall is the interface. Sorry, not interface, I'm so sorry, this is the mitotic phase. This part is the interface, this is the mitotic phase. And from here to here it is the interface. Now, if you remember in my last lecture as well, I have discussed certain things about some checkpoints. Here, or here rather, this at this G1S, there is a guard sitting here, okay? Who is guarding whether this G1 phase has synthesized uh, necessary proteins or enzymes which are required in the next stage. It is also guarding whether the DNA is damaged or not because if DNA is damaged then the cell if, if it undergoes division then it will undergo uncontrolled division which will lead to the cancer. So this checkpoint also checks that if any DNA is damaged or not. So this is the first checkpoint we can say which checks the damaging DNA as well as it checks uh, like the cell size, uh, the necessary enzymes or proteins that are uh, required in the next phase is are synthesized or not. 
This is called G1S checkpoint. There is one checkpoint which is inside this S phase, that is intra S checkpoint. There is another checkpoint at this. There is another guard second at this G2, and this is called M phase. We can also write M phase. Okay? Another checkpoint is present here which will also check uh, whether the DNA is damaged or not, chromosome number is maintained or not, uh, like uh, correct number of chromosomes are there or not, the enzymes, the uh, proteins, RNA which are required in the mitotic phase for the cell division, they are formed or not, spindle fibers, so many things are checked in this phase and this is called G2 in checkpoint. These checkpoints, they are regulated by certain proteins, okay, and certain complexes, protein complexes. And that is, that protein complex, the proteins rather, they are cyclines. The cyclines, they associated with some uh, kinase protein, which is cycline dependent kinase. In association with CDK and cycline, they form a complex and they regulate these checkpoints. Okay, so cycling along with its uh, like partner that is CDK, the total complex, they regulate these checkpoints. Okay, now uh, the level of uh, in each phase, there is different cycling for each of these phases. So, this cycling level is uh, varied. Okay? Like if in this phase, suppose I am giving you an example like in G1 phase a cycling that is cycling D is responsible for checking out all the uh, activities. Okay? Now, this cycling D level will be higher in this phase but in the S phase this will be degraded. Big but or uh, like before entering into the S phase, this cycling will be degraded. So you see, its level is not maintained. Okay? It sometimes rises when requires or sometimes it is degraded when it is not required. So this rise and fall of the level of cycling activates or inactivates the CDK. So the CDK level, activity of CDK is dependent upon the uh, level of cycling proteins. That means cycling, uh, like uh, rather if I say that cycling level is not constant throughout the cell cycle. But CDK level is constant throughout the cell cycle. This is very important. So cycling level may vary, okay, but CDK level this is constant. Only it needs to be activated by the presence of cycling. So the cycling, the appearance of cycling will activate the CDK, okay, but its level is constant throughout the cell cycle. So, depending on the cycling level, the CDK will be activated and these two will form a complex and act at these checkpoints. Okay? Now, so, this activity or, okay, I told you one more thing is that the cycling is degraded. Okay? Cycling is degraded. When it is not required in a particular stage, it is degraded because we have cycling A, we have cycling B, we have cycling uh, D, we have cycling E. Okay? So there are various cyclines which are acting in different phases. Like in G1, cycling D is active. In uh, S phase, cycling E and A are active. In, in G2, M checkpoint, cycling B is active in mitotic. Rather in uh, G2, M checkpoint or in the mitotic phase, cycling B is active. So different cyclines are responsible for different stages. So in certain stages, they need to be degraded. And this degradation occurs by UBQ. 
protein ligase protein so this helps by the enzyme uh, ub quickly ligase so the cyclin is degraded by ubiquitin ligation proteolysis that means that each part of the ubiquitin protein is tagged in the cyclin and then it undergoes degradation proteolytic degradation two such uh, ligases are there one is skp sorry p qli a factor SCF and this factor or this SCF uh, like helps in the degradation of the cyclin which acts at the G1S. So this this uh, factor or this ubiquitin ligase tags the cyclin which is acting at G1S phase and destroys that cyclin. Another uh, ubiquitin ligase is there which is anaphase promoting complex APC and this acts on the mitotic phase and degrades the cyclin which is present in the mitotic phase mainly cyclin B is degraded by APC and this is degrading cyclin D so remember the name of these two ubiquitin like this so the cyclins are degraded by E3 ubiquitin ionization and then it is degraded by the proteolytic degradation process. Next, when so cyclin when cyclin is degraded, then the CDK activity is inhibited. Okay, so we have seen that the CDK complex depends on the uh, level of cyclin. So there are three mechanisms by which the activity of CDK is maintained or regulated. First one as we have seen cyclin synthesis and degradation degradation cyclin synthesis when cyclin synthesis is higher that means cyclin level is higher CDK is active and when it is degraded it's, it is inactive stage. Next we have phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. Now there is one protein that is V1 protein. This is an inhibitory protein and it stands a, a position in the a CDK uh, in the tyrosine protein and this tyrosine protein of this CDK is, is like uh, it, this helps in the attachment of a phosphate group in the tyrosine residue of CDK. Suppose um, you have mitotic cycling. Okay? Along with this, we will do that. The cyclin uh, needs a specific CDK. Suppose CDK1. Okay? These two are coming and forming a complex that is mitotic cyclin CDK1. This is a complex that is formed. Now, if V1 is acting on it and phosphorylating the tyrosine, residue of this complex. So if it is phosphorylating, so this becomes inactive. Okay? Now there is another protein which is CDC25 protein phosphatase which removes this protein and activates this M-cyclin CDK. So the CDC25 activates the complex. So you can see one thing that CDK activity is dependent on the V1 and CDC225. The activity will be 
uh, like enhanced or increased if the level of V1 is low and when there is presence of CD, C25 and vice versa. So this is how the phosphorylation and dephosphorylation like it activates or deactivates the uh, cycling like regulates the activity of the CDK. Uh, now there is uh, one more thing that is uh, there is CDK inhibitor proteins are also there which acts at certain transition like G0, G1 or G1 S transition. In these two transitions, these inhibitor proteins, they act on CDK. So this is called CDKI proteins. So if there is any defect or any flaws in these transition or in these phases, this protein inactivate this or inhibit the activity of CDK. But it cannot decrease the level of CDK because CDK level is constant. So it inactivates the activity of uh, CDK. Okay? Now, uh, this is how the CDK is uh, acting or it is regulated by certain mechanisms like cycling, uh, cycling synthesis and degradation, phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. The CDK inhibitor proteins are also there. So basically, uh, when, suppose, suppose this is the cycle, okay? Now we have this one. Uh, So this is the CDK. Okay? So now what happens? This is the cycle. This is the CDK. Okay? Now, these two joints at a certain uh, like phase. So this is your, this complex. So, if this is phosphorylated, if this is phosphorylated by suppose ATP, okay? So, if ATP is acting on it and phosphorylating this, so this is inactive. But when this is dephosphorylated, this is now acting and it is regulating certain production of proteins which are uh, helping in the mitotic phase or in the interface, okay? So, this is an overview of how CDK activity is regulated. Now, we will see certain checkpoints. certain cell cycle checkpoints and we have seen that already we have G1S checkpoint which is regulated by Cycling D along with CDK4 or sometimes 6 complex. So G1S checkpoint is regulated by cycling D along with CDK4 or 6. There is intra S checkpoint which is regulated by cycling E or A and 
the CDK that is required is 2. Okay? Next we have mitotic phase kinase. And this is regulated by cyclin B and CDK1. Remember one thing, there is cyclin dependent uh, like complexes like C, D, C1 which in association with this kinase from this CDK1. Okay? Uh, sorry, this will be 2. CDC2. CDC2. This is another regulating uh, protein which regulates CDK1. This in phase kinase is regulated by maturation promoting factor which we call MPF. So this MPF will regulate the cell to enter into the M phase and this maturation promoting factor has this two subunit. We know that this overall checkpoints and everything, these are maintained or regulated by the uh, sub subunits. One is regulatory subunit, that is the cyclic. Cyclic is the regulatory subunits. This is regulatory subunits. And this cyclic dependent kinase is the catalytic subunit. This is catalytic because this is acting as the kinase uh, activity. So this has catalytic activity, okay? And remember one thing, when this is a kinase uh, uh, like enzyme, so when it is in its phosphorylated form, this will be inactive. And when cyclin will be dephosphorylated form, it will be also inactive. So for the activation of these complexes, Cyclin must be phosphorylated. Cyclin must be phosphorylated and CDK1 or CDK, normal CDK, it must be D phosphorylated. Okay, so for the activity of this complex, cyclin must be phosphorylated and this must be dephosphorylated. Okay, so this maturation promoting factor has this regulatory subunit and that is the cyclin B and the catalytic subunit CDC2. Like CDC2 activating, you can say kinase, and that regulates CDK1. So, this is the catalytic subunit. In association with the partner cyclin B, this overall complex is active, and this in turn then regulates the entry of the cell into the mitosis. One more thing is that this. CDK, I said that it must be dephosphorylated to be active. One such exception is there. Like CDK activating kinase protein is there which is CAK, C-A-K. This CAC acts on the acts on serine residue on CDK active site. That means this CAC that is the kinase phosphorylates acts means I am saying in other words, it is 
phosphorylating phosphorylates or acts on uh, the serinotrionine mainly thionine thionine residue of the CDK active complex this causes now when this is phosphorylated this is already the CDK is already now in its activated form now this causes conformational change this causes conformational changes and this conformational changes enhances its activity so it increases the cdk activity on conformational change so this cac protein which acts on the thiorine residue we know this if any uh, like protein or amino acid is phosphorylated it mainly acts on thionine or serine uh, amino acid because they have oh group okay that oh group of these two amino acid they are phosphorylated so this phosphorylation mainly occurs in the threonine residue which activates the cdk and this uh, like phosphorylation of this threonine residue causes conformational change which uh, in turn leads to an increase in its activation okay so this is one exception where phosphorylation of the cdk also activates its activity but mainly cyclin must be phosphorylated and uh, the cdk must be dephosphorylated Next, we have another checkpoint that is, so this M phase is regulated by MFMPF, okay? Now, we have another checkpoint that is, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, spindle assembly checkpoint. And this checkpoint checks the chromosome or attachment of chromosome by the uh, spindle fiber at the kinetochore. So it checks the it checks the chromosome attachment by spindle. At kinetochore. So, this is the region where this spindle fibers attaches them themselves on the two sister chromatin. And it must be uh, sure that the chromosome, these chromosomes are attached by the spindle fiber. Otherwise, the separation of the sister chromatin will not take place properly. So, this must be checked at this spindle assembly checkpoint. It mainly occurs in the metaphase to anaphase region. Why so? Because the attachment uh, mainly occurs in the prophase to anaph uh, metaphase region but in the anaphase region the two sister chromatids they are separated with the help of the spindle fiber and if these chromosomes are not attached with the spindle fiber the separation of the sister chromatid will not occur properly so this must be checked that the chromosomes are so, attached with the spindle fiber at the kinetochore another checkpoint is there which is morphogenesis checkpoint genesis checkpoint and this mainly uh, checks or any uh, it checks the any defect or abnormality is there in the cytoskeleton or not okay so this is your different checkpoints and how they are regulated by different proteins cyclin and they are corresponding cdk so this is what you have to remember one more thing about this uh, M phase kinase is that in this M phase kinase it is mainly regulated by MPF, okay, that is maturation promoting factor. So the cyclin initially its level is very high. Now as soon as the uh, phases are increasing in the mitosis, its level decreases. This is the first point that you have to remember that the cyclin level slowly decreases in the mitosis. Another thing is that 
the, this NPF uh, is inactive initially because this CDK was phosphorylated and cycling was dephosphorylated, mainly cycling B. But when this CDK is dephosphorylated and cycling is phosphorylated, MPF is active and now the cell can enter into the mito mitosis phase. So, this is what you have to remember that the maturation promoting factor regulates the entry of the cell into the mitosis by this mitosis uh, phase kinase and it is initially inactive because cycling uh, was dephosphorylated and CDK was phosphorylated but as soon the, as, as cycling was phosphorylated and CDK was dephosphorylated this NPF was active and it allows the cell to enter into mitosis and there are various checkpoints which one is G1S checkpoint which is regulated by cycling D and CDK four or six complex there is synthetic phase checkpoint that is uh, the or intra s checkpoint that is regulated by cycling e or a with cdk2 and you have gap 2 phase point that is um, or rather we can say mitotic phase kinase okay and that is regulated by cycling b and cdk1 complex so this is your Checkpoint and yes, there is spindle assembly checkpoint and morphogenesis as well. The spindle uh, assembly checkpoint checks the chromosome attachment with the spindle fiber at the kinetochore, and this checks any uh, abnormality in the cytoskeleton. So, this is your overall uh, the checkpoints of cell cycle. In the next video, we will see how this cycling and CDK uh, controls the checkpoint, what are the steps that is regulated, and what is the quality control of these checkpoints on the cell cycle.